So, yeah, let us start with uh, Snavitas uh, regarding uh, the manufacturing, uh, what they are into, what they are coming up with that and what are the products they are coming into DCR segments and what are the so challenges they are facing uh, and uh, to come up with that then. Yeah, good evening once again. See, Navita Solar established in 2013. Now we are one of the India leading solar model manufacturers. So we are ranked among the top 10 Indian solar manufacturers by JMK Research. See, we specialize in the production of monoperk and polycrystalline solar modules, backward integration of EVA. So then again, technology boost. So technology, what of the technology is updating is that, uh, see, silicon dominates the solar uh, manufacturing sector worldwide. We over 90% of the global market share followed by the thin film technology. There are prominent silicon technology variants including PERC, TOPCON and the HAT. See now most of the people are doing the mono PERC half cut cell and the wafer size of up to 210 mm. However, to be the competitive, we will need to transit from PERC to TOPCON. In the past two years, PERC newly built production line have reserved space for TOPCON manufacturing. See, at top at COP26, India announced its ambient to have 500 gigawatt of renewable power by 2030 to achieve net zero by 2017. So, India need to initial uh, between 20 to 30 gigawatt of solar PV annually in this decade. See, the GOA has announced a number of uh, measures to energize in solar manufacturing including PLI scheme then ALMM BCD. So PLI, so it was introduced in 2021 to incentive the establishment of global scale plant to manufacture the full value chain of higher performance solar modules. The Indian government has decided to promote the Atma Nirbhar Bharat vision and strengthen the country in manufacturing and export industries. India has also started focusing on reducing the dependency on China under its Atma Nirbhar scheme. In order to meet this capacity, the GOI allocated a budget of 19 crore, 19,000 crore 500 to PLA scheme in the union budget 2020, 2022. Sorry. Then again, BCD. So, BCD has implemented that uh, to avoid the, the Chinese. So, for cell, if you import it, it has to be 25 percentage and if it is a module, then it is a 40 percent. So, ALMM is in, implemented because to avoid again the China. So, so ALMM in the sense like uh, approved list of module manufacturers. So, for uh, promoting the India manufacturers. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so thank you, sir, Ninji, about the insight of uh, the modules, uh, whatever. Uh, you said is correct and let us go to Mr. Ravi Gautam Solar, uh, importance of equipment uh, and quality in operations, uh, uh, so plant operations and performance. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you EQ, EQ for this wonderful opportunity. So talking about the equipments like uh, equipment quality, I would like to highlight the point like uh, what are the equipments that we use when we manufacture. So when we talk about that, we say like uh, for us, we are using non-destructive laser cutting machine. It ensures that there are no micro cracks because as the technology is advancing, like uh, we are using M10 modules, M10 cells. So M10 cells are basically like we have to cut them in half. So traditionally we use higher temperatures to cut them in half. But now, as you can see, like uh, in the non-destructive laser cutting machine, it cuts them at a uh, lesser temperature and uh, it doesn't even use water. So I think uh, that's a point. And uh, the other thing is that using automat automatic machines, like uh, it automatic machines does not only increase the productivity, but also decreases the fragmentation rate. Okay, so thanks for the info. And, uh, let me ask uh, Smonath sir regarding the EPC quality and impact on plant performance. Good evening all. 
So we all agree that uh, we are installing solar plants in the rooftops, right? Solar plant, power plants. So it is also important to have proper maintenance for a solar power plant. Uh, in last session, someone was mentioning that uh, in future it may uh, turn up to be a uh, commodity which will be sell at a sell uh, in the uh, appliance store. So uh, I think um, uh, as from the last 10 years of experience, what I think is uh, a proper maintenance operation and maintenance is very much important for a solar plant to work uh, for long term. And uh, we all uh, say that we are into sustainability business. So, and uh, uh, mostly when we see at the market, only the panel, people are only concerned about the panel and inverter. But uh, commonly the failures happen due to the uh, low quality ACDB, DCDB and the components we are using in the ACDB, DCDB. So, uh, what I suggest is, uh, as a EPC company, we all we should always uh, look at the larger picture. We are selling the product for five years a, with with five years AMC and a twelve years product product warranty. So we all should uh, uh, look the picture in a larger picture, and we should uh, promote quality products in uh, in all the components like the the wire we are using, uh, the DB we are using, the SPDs we are using. Everything should be of high quality. That is my take. And the second point is that uh, we all are very much concerned about the subs subsidy business. Yes, I agree. I do agree that subsidy is uh, is a motivation in the market for the market. But uh, sometimes what happens when uh, government interfere too much into the market, uh, more the EPC company somehow uh, have to compromise in the quality of the product they are using. That should be uh, avoided. Uh, we, we, we should uh, come up with some solution to avoid such conditions. Like uh, uh, now the DBT scheme has come. Maybe the DBT will help uh, uh, the customers to choose better product. And I, I uh, personally don't prefer DBT also. I uh, suggest uh, government to uh, link the subsidy with the production. So that uh, the market will get a better price product in the, I mean, uh, the uh, customers will get uh, a subsidized product from the market and uh, from the market they can choose better quality product and uh, uh, maybe uh, it will help uh, EPC companies to provide uh, more uh, uh, quality and uh, more uh, uh, long lasting support to the customers. Thank you. So thank you so much for the insight and uh, serious as this question with you, emerging options and financial solar essential proof of projects for okay. Here, the first question is uh, uh, definitely whether we need to have uh, financing options available for the solar, solar industry. No doubt that any kind of a growth moving on for the, indus for, for the solar industry definitely need to have the financial assistance market supporting very heavily compared to the current market. And uh, when you are uh, coming on this particular line on the on the institutional side or the larger installations, as we all know, there are many options available at the moment. Uh, like uh, OPEX, things are available, right? In OPEX, in OPEX itself, uh, you have boot models available. You have Resco models available. Uh, then, in coming to the um, the capex side also, there are there are some companies providing deferred payment systems like EMIs or those kind of things. Uh, but uh, here also in the institutional market, whether it has flourished in the in the market of Kerala in that particular segment, that is again under question. The point here is like the accessibility of these particular options to the market it is not uh, established in the full-fledged mode what we actually require in the industry. So that is that is a particular point. I feel that you know we need to get uh, more uh, more uh, concentration to develop the institutional market in Kerala. That is number one. Number two, when we are talking about the, the retail rooftops, the retail rooftops uh, with the current uh, uh, game of K, uh, promoted by KCB, it is uh, yielding good results and uh, it is converting solar as a household product for everybody. All these things are happening and it's creating a clear movement inside the industry to just uh, make everybody think of solar as a viable option. But at the same time, when you're talking about, you know, whether can we just, you know, take this 
further without even the subsidy game once you know once that government incentives are getting curtailed to an extent there is another question i feel here we have to just look at the automotive industry the high capex mid sized or above up, upper mid sized suvs are moving not because of the necessity but it is because of the other facilities available there in the market so if you are talking about any kind of a financing options a viable financing option accessible financing option available there in the market definitely this industry can just go long way in a flourishing mode without that it will be very tough to move on that is a real fact and when is coming uh, at the time i mean you know we are talking about many other options available there are many uh, government banks available uh, uh, government banks are promoting uh, rather offering it's not promoting offering a financial solution financial assistance to the consumers uh, but effectively whether it is getting reached to the epc market and to the consumers in a time bounded way it is not actually happening then the second option is coming to be nbfcs who already i mean in a few of them nbfcs have already stepped into the market but the high rates definitely is uh, making the solar product as a non viable thing we have to look at it the other options you know what we are talking about you know government promoted banks like sidbees are offering solutions altogether uh, what it says is like the solution which is available need to be very clearly viable to people number 1 number 2 accessible to the stakeholders and the people and the, and the consumers stakeholders and the customer consumers accessibility to that is very important likewise if you are talking if you are going to a showroom like uh, for buying a luxury car what will happen is like within within no time you will get the call from at least four or five banks saying that you know such a requirement is there sir would be requiring a funding why this is happening and how is that contributing to the market a person who is just you know out of curiosity if he just moved into the point of a showroom just for the sake of enquiring it off will be landing up buying the car because you are making your funding available very clearly into the hands of the consumer consumer through the stakeholders that is very important through the stakeholders that is very important so the stakeholders and and the stakeholders has to just you know collectively try out for solutions in 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 cooperation in 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 uh, in uh, line with the uh, banking institutions to do that now when you are talking about the solutions available with the private banks of course private banks also say that okay we can give the funding no issues on that one but the problem is like you will be talking about an additional collateral again it is you know it is affecting the uh, buying capacity or rather borrowing capacity of the consumer it is not getting practical here what we w- wanted to have is like you know there should be some kind of a policy framework coming up there should be some kind of a government backup coming up like credit guarantee scheme what are you talking about to to promote the i mean to promote the non privileged state now you are seeing mudra loan sex wise and all these things are happening and you know it is saying that as per the government you know government sources it is moving the i mean business industries startup ventures into a big way similarly there should be government incentives credit guarantee scheme support should be given to the banks so that they can just dispense the um uh, uh, borrowings to the uh, the consumers the desired consumers in a very good way second is that the, in the previous discussion one of the persons one of the uh, one of the one of the panelists rightly mentioned solar has to move as a commodity right rather now it is it is a project so it has to move out of the project finance game to the commodity financing fam- game so that will that will simply i mean you know, take it to the next level wherein every bank or every financial institution can look at it as a commodity for that only thing is like to ensure their you know to ensure their uh, uh, collaterals are rather their fundings is safe the cash flows are coming su- uh, smoothly the consumer has to get the outputs very nicely consumer has to get the solutions working very properly for them so that particular point they can definitely ensure by empaneling quality vendors who will be providing supports and service to the consumers so that their monthly electricity bills can be directed to the banking banking system for repaying their uh, debts on this front so the point is like there can be there, there, there may be there may be a corporate segment or an institutional segment which is getting which is getting abundantly funded by i mean by the international agency with the support of the international agencies through sbi pnb all these things but in the retail segment wherein the actually the industry has to flourish okay there there we need to have some kind of a policy frame line coming up and there should be some clear, clear policy should be there clear system should be there to evaluate and support 
the, the underserved and the desirable lines of msmes and the individual lines and that's my opinion on that one so we need to have the banking system completely coming into picture to just you know support the industry in a very heavy way and all the stakeholders has to work together to that particular platform to see that five year down the line the industry is getting every household as a solar plant thank you yeah thank you sir thank you so much for the info and uh, we request now shafir ji to tell the module pricing impact on project commission how that is impacting the projects thank you eq for this opportunity and uh, to the question regarding the pricing or the road map uh, for the module pricing this has been a very serious concern for the last two years if you look back on the last financial year so last september we had the gst implementation from 5 percentage to 12 percentage so there was a big rift of pricing due to the gst implementation and secondly there was a customs duty implementations on the cells and the imported modules so there again uh, the, the module price has been increased say the imported module by 40 percentage and the cell uh, duty was around 25 percentage and uh, after that scenario it was implemented on march and after that the scenario is like every week or every month the prices are keeping on changing so this is actually not at all good for the industry when it comes to a uh, distributor point of view like us we are actually uh, distributors for uh, canadian solar we work along with ornit and also we do with rec uh, premium uh, product so when we were doing really very well in the last years and when it come to this particular point because of the almm uh, the duty implementation and all these concern we see the pricing have uh, tremendously moved from uh, earlier stage till now we see around 30 or more than 33 percentage increase in the pricing so ultimately this is the end customer who is going to suffer out of uh, this pricing and also the stakeholders like distributors or even the epcs are losing the margins you know to compete in the market they are actually reducing the margins uh, to work or take to make the project this is uh, on a long run this is not at all uh, helpful for the industry and uh, to add to the point the, the technology wise competition for the product like the same product which has been offered earlier has been offered now at more than 33 33 percentage uh, height so is that really what we call as inflation yeah because the end customer is having actually paying 33 percentage more and we are not getting the product more competitive uh, on a long run so uh, this has to be seriously looked at uh, on, on this particular point and uh, you know the manufacturer also should you know even the indian manufacturers if you look at it uh, on that particular point should seriously address uh, on the pricing uh, part how the pricing is going to such a scenario because if, even if it is a residential or a commercial project it, it takes minimum 2 to 3 months for the stakeholder to take a decision or take a call on uh, the project yeah so by that time uh, the pricing even as a distributor if he offers a price and the epc also offers a price to the end customer the scenario will be totally different after 2 months and uh, this will put the epc in a very bad situation in front of the end client because uh, the rapid change in policies will not be so better explained to the end customers so this is the point on the pricing uh, what i have to say yeah so thank you sir for the 